This week marks the 40th anniversary of a defining moment in American history, the resignation of President Richard Nixon. It was August 9, 1974, when Nixon boarded Marine One for the last time and flashed his famous V for victory. But his undoing took years in the process, starting with the break in at the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate office building in June of 1972. One of the most important figures in shedding light on Nixon's role in the cover-up, the scandal that became known as Watergate, was then White House counsel John Dean. Testifying in front of the Senate committee investigating Watergate in 1973, Dean implicated Nixon and other top White House officials, including himself in the Watergate case, and eventually spent four months in prison for his role. And John Dean is with us today to talk about his new book, The Nixon Defense, What He Knew and When He Knew It. John, great to have you here. Thank you, Nora. What's new in this new book? Because you did transcribe thousands of new recordings. I did. Well, I, every page has something I didn't know. Uh, but the big things are, uh, I'm surprised how passive he is in the beginning, how he's getting his information some very few sources, just Haldeman, a little bit from uh, Ehrlichman and the Washington Post. He slowly approves every though er, every, every early move in the cover-up is approved by Nixon. And then uh, he starts getting increasingly involved and finally he gets totally obsessed with it and it really is consuming all of his time. Was there one specific thing that you learned from these recordings that said, gosh, how did I miss this? Or how did I not know it at the time? I, I didn't know that he had literally been engaged in suborning Jeb Magruder's perjury, uh, which was key. Jeb was the deputy director of the campaign. Uh, his perjury was key to the success of the early cover-up. Nixon's right in the middle of that. I didn't know he'd, he had actually raised money for the Watergate defendants to help keep them on the reservation, as we used to say, or, or silent. Uh, he solicits and sells an ambassadorship uh, just to raise money for the Watergate defendants. This, this was all new to me. Mm -hmm. So there are things, and, and little things by connecting the pieces day by day, I set out to try to understand how could somebody as savvy as Richard Nixon let his presidency fall apart on a bungled burglary? Mm -hmm. Well, you track it day by day and you see how it happens. But it was more, I mean, Nixon was involved in the dirty tricks. It was more yes, than was. just that, right? I mean, even Bob Woodward, who has an excellent review of your book uh, in the Washington Post, says we may never know the extent of the dirty tricks. That's true. And, and one of the real important things the Post did is they meld uh, Watergate, the, the burglary, with other events and the abuses of process that occurred. And I think that is the only way you can really understand what happened in the Nixon presidency. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, President Nixon specifically directed his White House chief of staff to destroy the tapes. Why wasn't it done? You know, I, I, it happens twice. Mm -hmm. He raises it with Haldeman in, in April. And uh, Haldeman says, sure, I'll take care of it. He also cautions, that maybe you want to keep some of them, uh, those in the national security area. Henry's making his own record, maybe you want your own record. And they, and they talk about having a switch system, but they never go there, they never do it. He raised, Nixon raises it again, doesn't happen. Uh, I can't explain other than Haldeman gets so consumed by Watergate himself, he just let it go. In fact, you say, I think in the book, that it was just a, one more example of just how the, the White House was won sort of poorly. They just didn't carry out a lot of the decisions that were made. You know, it's, I always thought Nixon, you know, considered option papers and had his legal pad and was writing the pro and con of this and the other thing. He is a very seat of the pants decision maker. And that's one of the reasons he got in some of the trouble he got into with Watergate. So the tapes were not destroyed, but again, what about that 18 and a half minutes that were missing? I did a special appendix just on that issue because I knew it would come up. Uh, there's a very small group of people who could, could have done it, uh, a couple of them are still alive, and I was more interested in why they did it. And the reason they did it, and the reason it was erased, whoever did it, uh, is because it would have blown Nixon's defense, that he didn't know anything about Watergate and a cover-up until I told him on March 21st, uh, and this it was not true. Uh, I know now from the tapes he knew many times, but he also knew on, Jan on June 20th, the date of the uh, 18 and a half minute gap. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's a fascinating read, and Bob Woodward even say that these new tapes depict a White House full of lies and chaos and distrust, crookedness that makes Netflix's House of Cards look unsophisticated. I'm about to do a binge watch on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us know how they compare. John Dean, what a pleasure. Congratulations on the new book. Thank you. 40 years. And Bob will be back next weekend, and we will have much more on the 40th anniversary of Nixon's resignation, including an interview with the two Washington Post journalists who broke the story of Watergate, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. And we'll see you tomorrow on CBS This Morning with Charlie Rose and Gail King, where we'll have the latest on the Ebola crisis and all the other news. Thanks for watching. Face the Nation.